the Centurion Law Group, a Pan-African Corporate Law. He's the executive chairman of the African Energy Chamber, a man of many caps. And I would like to say welcome to Business Experts. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Agreed. What, I, what will be your thoughts on the pa recently passed uh, petroleum industry bill by the National Assembly? I think it's a really, really good um, bill and a good progress for Nigeria. Um, our industry has waited for about 13 years to have this bill. It's better it's done now. And I think now comes at a critical time when we're dealing with so much around the world energy transition and how to really set up Nigeria to move and um, to fast track itself into its energy development. So there could not have been a better incentive to really drive the oil and gas industry forward and also expand into diversification. So thinking about the totality of the circumstances, it is a good bill and it's a good timing and we hope that they fast track its implementation real quick. Okay, so um, what, 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 do you, what do you see as uh, the benefits of this transition? Because there's a whole lot around uh, of this caution around it. Is, it. is it time for Africa? Should Africa move at its, at its pace? So basically, what do you make of the transition for Africa? Well, Af we have to take things in context. Africa has, um, done, Africa has emitted carb carb carbon emissions 13 times less than Europe, 17 times less than China, and 21 times less than the United States. Mm. You cannot get somebody who has been the victim of these uh, of carbon emissions to be the one paying the price, the penalty, and reparations for this. We still need time. But let's look at a bigger context. 850 million people across the continent do not have any access to clean cooking or any kind of electricity. That is a big, big issue. We need to make energy poverty the most important issue right now than ensuring that some girl or somebody in Norway or Scandinavia is, ha is, is happy. But we still have to look at developments. We still have to drive up um, petrochemicals, urea, ammonia, NPK, fertilizer plants, agricultural bases so that people in Africa can feed themselves and not try to cross the Mediterranean to look for greener pastures in Europe. So those critical issues where people want to just get a meal every day are more important than people trying to say, let us get less carbon emissions. If we increase, if we continue producing hydrocarbons and use, by the way, we need to use it well. We need to really, really use it well. And I think that's what the PIB does. If we do that, then we have a chance, we have a fighting chance to still develop, protect the environment, and still keep carbon emissions less than 1.5 de um, de degrees, which we will not be hurting the environment as much as possible. And gas is really going to change how we look at the future, especially here in Nigeria and across Africa. Okay, now considering the, the, the just the sheer the amount of the gas uh, reserves Nigeria has, how critical is it for the oil and gas sector in Nigeria to get it uh, right, and of course the African continent. Well, I've always said Nigeria is more of a gas country mm. than an oil country. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're celebrating the, gas, the decade of gas right now. They had a big um, honor yesterday for the Secretary General of OPEC, uh, Mohamed Sadiusi Bakindo. Great Nigerian doing amazing things. But when it comes to gas, you have to look at, you could do power plants. You cannot run industrial generators. So you need gas for your development and you need gas for your diversification. Now, the, the, the honors on us is to see how do we attract that needed investment into the Nigerian market, into around, uh, around Africa. Because if you capture some of the gas that we flare in Nigeria, if you capture some of the gas that is being stranded, associated gas, you'll do well. The most profitable Nigerian petroleum scheme has been the Nigerian LNG. It's always reported profits back to back. So if it's, if it's working well, we should increase it. I would even suggest Nigeria launch another four LNG trains so that you can compete with Qatar and Russia, the potential to do that is there. More than 200 TCF of gas around Nigeria. So you just cannot ignore that. But I think sometimes we have an addiction to oil <laughs> because we think it's too cheap, but we need, we need to fast track gas development because it's going to be a transition fuel 
into energy transition, which is really critical, and let's pay attention to that. Okay, you mentioned OPEC. What, what significance is this partnership? 50 years, we just celebrated that. Well, 50 years of OPEC being doing one thing, creating stability in the market. Nobody wants volatility. When you have a volatile market, it's bad for Nigeria, it's bad for consumers, it's bad for producers. But 50 years, you have to look at it as an African. You have to look at the role Africans have played. You have to look at the role Nigeria has played. You have to look at, I've negotiated um, countries going into OPEC. Nigeria has always played a massive role in bringing other Africans in. But you also have to look at what saved the oil and gas industry was a declaration of cooperation of OPEC. And who led that? Mohamed Sanusi Bakindo. It was a Nigerian coming out of Yola, a little small town in Nigeria, <laughs> that could bring the Russians, the Saudis, and everybody together, and they got a deal done. So sometimes there is, you know, they say beautiful things come from small places. Right. Some It really happens. But I think we need to start thinking, not the, the past is reference, not residence. Where do we go from here between mm -hmm. Nigeria's relationship and OPEC? Do we get more Nigerians into research? Do we look at preparing ourselves for the future, that development and what needs to be done? And that is really what is going to really shape how OPEC works in Nigeria, how we look at even the African Petroleum Producer Association, which you have a very humble man there. He's huh? another Nigerian, another Nigerian Dr. Yeah. Omar Farouk. <laughs> yeah. You have to look at how we support them because that great reservoir of knowledge that exists within this country, it can be infectious. You need to take that around mm -hmm. Africa. As the head of the African Energy Chamber, it's always one of the key things I say, use Nigerian skills, which are world-class, top-notch. They've made some mistakes, but sometimes you have to learn from those who've made mistakes okay. than, try, than those who try to tell you that they know too much, because those who say they know too much, they really don't know. So use Nigerian skills and experience and really develop Africa. Mozambique is going to have a lot of gas. They could learn from Nigeria. Equatorial Guinea, Gabon, mm -hmm. Angola, mm -hmm. so much skills, so much talent in Nigeria, but also Nigerians have to start learning French and, they, and <laughs> Spanish and Portuguese and not get too comfortable in Nigeria because they, there is a drive. There's mm -hmm. something that makes you uniquely Nigerian in the oil mm -hmm. and gas sector. Mm -hmm. They don't say no. They get up at seven o'clock. It's not a big issue. And they don't care about wearing good suits. Mm -hmm. They want. They want just want to. We walk. just want to hustle. They want to make so much <laughs> money. And if you want to be rich, you want to be Nigerian. Uh, okay, great. And now, so you just took part, of course, at the uh, 20th edition of the oil and gas uh, conference mm -hmm. and, of course, exhibition. What were your major takeaways from that? The big takeaway you look at there is that we're back. Mm -hmm. The oil and gas industry is back. There's been COVID, we couldn't meet, we couldn't talk to each other. Mm -hmm. Everybody had been zoomed out. Mm -hmm. The first thing everybody's relieved is that it's been back. But more importantly, it was the passage of the PIB that was a game changer. Mm -hmm. It gave the industry a shot in the arm. There is, I've never, I've never seen so much enthusiasm in a room in Nigeria with oil and gas producers like I've seen at NOG. They have, they, there is some excitement because why? There's gonna be drilling in deep water. So you're going to see more discoveries and more gas discoveries which could be developed. There's gonna be dr drilling in shallow water because government took the proper step to incentivize it. And you got to give credit to your minister. I mean, this guy put it together. <laughs> Nobody thought he could do it. And I heard he has his, a birthday yesterday. So yeah, like he probably days, ran yeah. away to go enjoy his birthday <laughs> and rest. But that is something that you find. And I think sometimes we look at how much money goes here or goes here. But I think mm -hmm. what's really important is that people are enthusiastic, People are now thinking, we can do this. And I think Nigeria needs that more than ever. Coming out of COVID, coming out of a, a market that a lot of people lost um, revenue with the, uh, the difficult market turns. And you're starting to see people saying, we're going to do it. But also foreign investors are looking at Nigeria again and are saying, we can invest in some of the new fields that are coming up. We can invest in gas. They're seeing Nigeria's great great market as Africa's largest nation, 200 million people. How can you not think this is where you need to put your money, you're going to make profit in, 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 among other things, but you have a skilled population that can really drive Africa forward. And so 
There is it, and that's why I'm here, because I know there's a lot of money to be so made in Nigeria. you're here for the skills and the money. <laughs> skills, the money, and the food. Yo, okay. Did you have a jollof rice? I had a jollof rice. I had. I'm going to Ghana. I need to comp. I need to compare which oh, tastes better. This is going to be the best. But I also had something different. I had pepper, pepper soup, soup and my my. <laughs> oh, very <laughs> so, fantastic. So I'm happy being in Nigeria. <laughs> okay, I must sincerely thank you, Ayik, for spending thank some you. time with us. Thank you so much. Yes, and thank so you. we move uh, straight to surviving COVID-19 with 